In this video, we'll break down how to create these really cool clone effects in Final Cut Pro using this really cool new tool called the Magnetic Mask. And before we continue on this video, if you're looking for some really cool Final Cut Pro plugins, go ahead and check out my website, winkinsmedia.com. The link is down in the description below. But without further ado, let's go ahead and show you how to create these really cool effects. So here's a clip that we're using. This is just from the new Polo G music video. Now what you want to do is you want to find a clip where there's pretty good contrast. For example, if you was wearing all black clothing and the background was really black and there wasn't like clear contrast, the magnetic mask would definitely struggle. So that's something to keep in mind. So what you want to do is head over here to the effects panel and then you will scroll down until you find masks and keying. So click on masks and keying and scroll down until you find the magnetic mask. Now apply the magnetic mask onto your clip just like so. We can go ahead and just close out the effects window. Now all you simply want to do is just click on the actual subject. So there we go. Now as you see it missed a little bit. So we can go ahead and just add another point right here. So there we go. And now I think that is a pretty good job. Now you can go through and zoom in to like 200, 400%. So actually we'll go, let's go to like 400%, so you see, so it just depends. Now you can go through and look at it, see, so it missed a little bit here. Let's head over here to the brush tool and just decrease it a little bit. And we want to add a little more into the mask, something like that should look pretty good. So see, you just kind of, you want to kind of just go through everything. As you can see, it missed a little bit here. Let's go ahead and add a little more to it just so the selection looks a lot better. So again, you can go through and really define it. I'm kind of rushing it a little bit just for the sake of the tutorial. But you just want to quickly scan over. It's missing a little bit that. Maybe we can mess with that. Let's go through and see how it's doing over here. I think that looks pretty good. Now we can go through. So we're kind of just going through and just seeing. I think that looks uh, relatively okay. If you want to go to the mag the brush tool, maybe we want to um, minus out a little bit of this. We don't really want the magnetic mass to be selecting this part over here. So you can go through and really just re really refine it. So see, I think that looks pretty good. Let's see what the selection is. We want to decrease that a little bit. And I think that looks pretty good. Now let's head back over to fit. And I think it's doing a pretty good job. Again, not perfect. I'm rushing it a little bit for the sake of the tutorial. But you can go through. And once you kind of get it to your liking, all you want to do is click on analyze. As you can see, it's going to track the subject. Now as you see, it's missing a little bit here. So let's see, like right here. We want to go to the plus tool and we want to add a little more um, to the magnetic mass, a little more right here, another point. So let's go ahead and analyze it again and see how Final Cut is doing. So we'll go through. So again, it's very much trial and error. And let's see, like right here, we want to add a little more. So it missed that a little bit. So we want to go ahead and just simply add that point. Now we can go through it and click on analyze. As you can see, I think that's doing a pretty good job. Again, I'm rushing it a little bit for the sake of the tour, but as you see, if we scroll through, I think it's doing a pretty good job, maybe a little bit right here. Um, and then let's look at Analyze one more time. And there we go. Now I think the mask is perfectly tracked. So you can see, there we go. Now it's perfect. Now all you want to do is click on here and click on done. And there you go. Now you have the subject completely cut out. And I think overall it did a really good job of cutting out the subject. Now we can select on here. We can just click on right click, hide, hide magnetic mask editor. Hold down the option key and now we can duplicate um, this clip. Now you're going to select on this bottom clip. And we just want to delete the magnetic mask. So there we go. This is just the background clip. And here is the cutout. What we can do is head over to this tool. And we can just bring this down just so the timeline isn't so like messy. So you can see the layers are a lot lower or a lot smaller. Now we can select on this. Now let's duplicate this one time and let's duplicate this again. So there we go. Now we have like three cutouts. So what you want to do is go ahead and kind of figure out what you want to actually animate. So what we're going to do is we're going to select on this one right here. And let's take the position and we're going to drag the position over something like that. I think that looks, looks pretty good. Now we can select on this clip and let's kind of get into the position we want. And then as you can see, we can drag it over and there you go. Now you have two more clones, two clones of the actual subject. So we go ahead and play the clip. As you can see, that just looks really cool. Now let's say we want to go ahead and actually animate them. So let's go to the beginning of this clip and let's zoom out to let's say something like 50%. Now let's go ahead and just disable the top one and we'll disable the, the background clip. Now let's say we want to animate the actual like kind of like scale. But we want to have it scale in from right here. So what you do is you select on this transform tool. So we're going to select on this subject. Now we're going to take the anchor point and we're going to move the anchor point down here because this is where we want the actual animation um, to happen. 
So as you can see, let's type in like negative 490 for the anchor point. Now in order to get it back to the center, so you can see on the anchor point Y negative 490, we have to go over here to the Y and type in negative 490. And as you can see, now this subject is completely like back to normal. We can select on this one and let's do over to the Y too. Let's go negative 490 to the anchor point and take the Y and change this back over to negative 490 and there you go. Now as you see the anchor point is changed um, for both these clips and we can select on this one. Now we're going to decrease the scale. Actually before we do that let's go ahead and just zoom in to something like let's say we want it to happen right here and place a marker. So we can place a keyframe on scale. Now we can go back to the beginning and because it's already keyframe we can just enter in the value 0 as you can see it automatically keyframes for you. So as you can see now as you can see it's popping in right here now we can do the exact same thing for this one. So go to right here, click on keyframe on scale, then go back to the beginning and change the scale back down to zero. So this is very much, you know, it just depends on what you want to do. So you see you can animate, you can adjust the anchor point, you can animate the scale, animate the position, rotation, whatever you want. So we go ahead and select down right here. As you can see, see now kind of it zooms in from the bottom. So as you can see, that's just a really cool um, effect. Then we can go ahead and enable the top clip and then we can enable the bottom clip or the background clip and then we can go ahead over here and go to fit and as you can see now you have this really cool clone effect where it kind of just uh, pops up and there you go you have this really clean um, clone effect and you can also add some motion blur from Ryan Nagel so if we head over here and, and we go into um, motion blur and apply moderate motion blur and go ahead and just apply it to basically like the place where you or the layers you animated. Now the playback probably is not going to be great because motion blur is really intensive um, on your computer. So we'll go ahead and play it back and let's see if it's a little bit laggy. So you can see, yeah, see it's a little it's a little bit choppy, but you see just because motion blur is it just it takes a lot of power to actually like use motion blur. So you probably want to I mean it'll look perfectly fine when you render the project out, or you can just turn on proxy media. As you can see, because we added motion blur, you have blur to the actual animation. And now as you can see, you have this really cool clone effect. And there you go, just as simple as that. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it helpful and informative. If you enjoy these types of videos, make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And again, if you're looking for some really cool Final Cut Pro plugins, go ahead and check out my website, winkinsmedia.com. Link is down in the description below. See you in the next one. Peace.